Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and we will light the candle of love. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of peace. We light it and the candle of hope again as we remember Jesus born in Bethlehem, our hope and our peace. Today, we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of love. In their old age, God gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth a son called John. John spoke to the people bravely in the desert, denying his own comforts and prepared to die for what he believed. John taught that we should share what we have with others, treat each other kindly, and show God's love. He did this because he cared for people and he wanted them to repent and find God's forgiveness. Jesus said, For God so loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Love is like a candle shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, let's celebrate the love that we have in Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, your witness, John the Baptist, grew up strong in spirit and prepared people for the coming of the Lord. He loved your people and baptized them in the River Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us to have that same love, that we would be witnesses to him and spread the good news of your love. As Christmas draws closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome him. Amen. And now I invite you to listen to the messages on love from Carmen and Pastor Bill. Welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little, and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. We begin with our call to worship. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Our opening prayer. Bless us with love, O merciful God, that we may love as you love, that we may show patience, tolerance, kindness, caring, and love to all. Give us knowledge, O giver of knowledge, that we may be one with our universe and earth. O compassionate one, grant compassion unto us, that we may help all fellow souls in need. Bless us with your love, O God. Bless us with your love. Amen. Christmas is one of the best times of the year for movies and TV specials. Everything from It's a Wonderful Life to a Charlie Brown Christmas to Miracle on 34th Street and how the Grinch stole Christmas, and then so many more. There are lots of people that each December have their list of shows they need to see to feel like it's Christmas. But while these movies and TV shows are all great stories, they're not the story. Because in the midst of all of the more modern Christmas stories, we have the original stories, the ones that in a real way give birth to all the others. And as we celebrate love during Advent, we have the story of a key participant in the birth of Jesus, someone who had to be on board with everything that was about to happen, and someone whose love would change everything, Mary. Every year at this time, we read the Magnificent, found in Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. 
It's a passage of scripture that tells us how Mary responded to the unexpected and confusing news that she was pregnant. My soul magnifies the Lord, she says, and my spirit rejoices in God. Magnify is an odd term in this context, but I always think of it like this. To magnify God is to live your life in a way that makes God's love for the world even bigger and even more obvious to the people who surround us. And in a real way, to choose to magnify God, especially in times when we're asked to respond to a new challenge or a new reality in our lives, has a lot to do with how we love. And if anyone could understand what it means to respond to God in the midst of the unexpected, it was Mary. She is faced with the end of life as she knew it, and she responds by saying she's going to rejoice and make God's love known to the world. Mary's situation was a little more dire than most of ours, and she was the first person who was asked to respond to the Christmas story, but she wasn't the last. Because though we are called to participate in the Christmas story in a very different way than Mary was, we are invited into this story nonetheless. That's because at Christmas time and pardon me, that's because at Christmas time and all year, if we're going to be a part of the Christmas story, we're called to make the hard choice to love. I don't use that phrase hard choice lightly. I use it because loving this world and loving one another requires something from us. It requires us to invest in others. It requires us to give of ourselves. And most of all, love requires us to be willing to be changed. Let's go back to those Christmas movies again. Have you ever watched A Christmas Carol? the story of Ebenezer Scrooge and how he was transformed from a grumpy, hard-hearted miser to a generous and loving man? Upon reflection, when you analyze Christmas movies, the main character often goes through some sort of a transformation. George Bailey finds hope again. The Grinch's heart grows three sizes. Charlie Brown learns what Christmas is all about. The list goes on. And when you think about it, as much as these are Christmas stories, they could also be Advent stories. Because Advent is all about getting ready. Advent is all about our own transformation. It's about preparing our heart for someone who is coming and about opening it up to new ways of being. Christians are supposed to transform the world for good. But that's a tall order. It's hard to change the world. We can do our best. We can work for good, we can pray for peace, but in the end, we find out an important truth. You can't create love in the world until you find love in yourself, and love changes us. Even Christmas movies know this. Scrooge realizes the error of his ways and his heart is transformed, and only then does he give generously. Charlie Brown finds meeting with his sad little Christmas tree despite the fact the whole world has gone commercial and no one understands what Christmas is really about anymore. And if you've ever seen National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, in the end we see Clark Griswold, who just wanted a perfect Christmas, finding, love of, finding the love of his family despite the fact that just about everything has gone wrong. If we're really serious about Advent, if we're really serious about preparing our hearts for the coming of Christ, if we are truly using this season to focus on what is coming, there is no way that we won't be changed by it. Maybe we won't have a big, miraculous, carol-filled Christmas morning, but inside our hearts, if we listen closely, we'll hear the change happening and the love filling us. And as powerful as that love is inside of us, it's even more powerful when we share it. What if in the face of all that we find troubling with the world, we showed the world what God's love really means? What if we showed how powerful it could be? How the Grinch Stole Christmas starts out, every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch doesn't like the celebrations, he doesn't like the singing, he doesn't like the presents, and just plain doesn't like the whole thing. 
So he devises a plan to slip down into the town in the night, bag up all the trappings of Christmas, take all the presents in the hope of ruining Christmas. The next morning, he stands on his mountain waiting for the people to wake up and be devastated. But instead, he hears singing. The Who's wake up, and it doesn't matter to them that they didn't have trees or presents or decorations. And it turns out that no matter what he tried to take away from them, Christmas came anyway. And it stuns him. And he says to himself, Maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. The story tells us that the Grinch's heart grew three sizes that day, and he returns all the things he took, and is welcome to the feast, and yes, even carves the roast beast. When he saw the love that the Who's had, when he realized that this love was inside of them and couldn't be taken away, that's when he realized what it was all about, and that's when he was changed, too. You and I, we're not who's from Whoville, but we are Christians, and we are the people who spend this time of year preparing our hearts for the one who is yet to come and being transformed in the process, and we have something we can share with the world. This time of year, no matter what is happening around us, we are called to prepare our hearts to love anyway. We're asked to open them up and to get ready to welcome Christ into the world. But more than that, we are called to love this world. That's because Christ still comes into this world. Christmas still happens. It didn't just happen once. It happens all the time. Because Christmas may be about a story that we read. It may be about Mary and Joseph and the baby and the manger and no room at the inn. But that's not the end of the story. The great Christmas story continues to play out and the truly incredible thing is that you and I are invited onto the stage and we even get to choose our own lines. And so, as we prepare for Christmas, here's a question. What is your script going to say? My hope is that your script is going to be full of the words and actions of one who wants to magnify God and to live out Christmas. My hope is that we'll be one of a person who has been transformed by the love of God and who wants to love the world because of God. The Grinch, Scrooge, Charlie Brown, George Bailey, and all the rest. Those are great stories, but so is yours. And this Christmas, if you really open your heart to the love of Christ, then your story is about to get really good, and I can't wait to hear it. Let us, God's people, pray. God Almighty, great and merciful, purify our souls and grant us the humility to live according to your word and will. Awaken our hearts to be eager in childlike anticipation for the coming celebration of this holy infant, our hope and our Redeemer. O Lord Most High, fill us with Mary's wonder, hope, and trust. God Almighty, great and merciful, keep us vigilant and insistent as we advocate constantly for the causes of compassion, peace, and cooperation among all who govern in our world, in our nation, and in our villages, towns, and cities. O Lord Most High, fill us with Mary's wonder, hope, and trust. God Almighty, great and merciful, comfort and heal those who suffer with devastating illness, serious depression, or any life-limiting circumstance, and give respite to all who give love and support. O Lord Most High, fill us with Mary's wonder, hope, and trust. O God Almighty, great and merciful, Release us from fresh and remembered grief as our loved ones arise to boundless joy in everlasting life with you. O Lord Most High, fill us with Mary's wonder, hope, and trust. God Almighty, great and merciful, grant continuing renewal and energy to all who have answered your call in the model of Mary and have inspired us by their example in faithfulness and worship. O Lord Most High, fill us with Mary's wonder, hope, and trust. 
O God of love and glory, detach us from earthbound noise to listen deeply and experience the true birth of Christ within and through us. Infuse us with the obedience of faith that will guide us and sustain us as we follow the path of our Messiah. We ask through the imminence of the incarnate Christ and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, who together with you are one God, our strength and our salvation, forever and ever. Amen. Go now. Wait and work for the coming of God. In the wild places, prepare a straight path for the Lord. Lead lives of holiness and godliness. Strive to be found at peace and speak freely of the Lord's comfort and promise. And may God, our shepherd, gather you in loving arms. May Christ Jesus reconcile justice and peace within you. And may the Holy Spirit baptize you into the life of God. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Used to go, but little darling, they're not there anymore. So just remember me, I'll remember. Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church. We welcome you to Chet TV, uh, Advent Ministries, uh, with our different pastors in town. And uh, we're thankful to Marlon and Chet TV for this effort to do this, so uh, we can share the, the gospel message, uh, the Christmas story, out to people who are shut-ins and whatever. I visit at the hospital a lot, and there's people there, and uh, they have Chet TV on lots of times when I'm there, and uh, some see me and some don't, whatever, and that's all right. But the message is going out, and we're thankful for that opportunity. My message uh, is uh, we, we divided up the uh, Advent uh, ideas, and um, I'm given the one, the, the message at Christmas love, I'm, I'm calling it, uh, the, uh, the Christmas Advent issue of love. Um, and so I want to consider that, if we can, just for a few moments together today. Uh, I went back and I was thinking in preparation about the Christmas story found in Matthew about the virgin birth and all such, and then uh, over in the Gospel of Luke where it all takes place and whatever, the word love is not found. It's nowhere found. But the reality is we know and believe that the love was very present. Joseph was in love with that lady, though she was a virgin, and he kept her a virgin until uh, the baby was born. Uh, he had married her and kept her that way. And then, so there's love between them, husband and wife. And then there's love between mom and dad and baby Jesus uh, in, in the Christmas story. Um, so there was lots of love present. Um, but um, the reality is Christmas is really all about love. Christmas is all about love. And um, so that's, that's important because... As we, we think we want to find some verses there to prove that uh, idea that Christmas is really all about love. And so my first point is love was showed. Love was showed. Where was it showed? Well, the very uh, well-known verse of the Bible, you might well know it. Uh, it used to be in the old hockey games down there in the corner of the, of the hockey rink all the time in, in Toronto Maple Gardens, Maple Leaf Gardens. There's you know, the camera would pan along and the puck is in the corner. And there's John 3.16. And I was in Winnipeg one time, and I saw a sign. I'm driving along up on top of a building, and it said, You tell them, Johnny. You tell them. And it was John 3, 16. And uh, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And here at Christmas was God showing his gift of love. He, he told the story, and then in John 3, 16, he unwrapped the gift and says, here's what it is. And he had the pictures of Jesus and all those stories, and I, I had, a, had a picture on, in a Bible, and I almost bought it. It was a little small, and it's uh, precious moments, and with the baby Jesus in the manger, and the little girl whispers, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And uh, call him Jesus, because he would save his people from their sins. But love was showed. God so loved the world. The Greek has this kind of, for God, uh, uh, God so loved. And the word so there, it says, reflects back to verse 15 of John 3. And so I'll just read that verse 15, because that's uh, an important verse here. And I had a mark, and it's got away. The wrong direction. Here we go, John 3. And uh, so the... Um, Verse 15 reads this way. And so he, Moses was lifted up in the wilderness. And Jesus says, As Moses was lifted up in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man, he, be lifted up, 
so that whoever belie believes will in him have eternal life. Now, John 3.16 is a reflection of back upon that, and he even used some of the same words. He says, so, uh, he, so that whoever believes will in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And let's just tear that apart for a little bit and see how we can put it back together. Um, it reflects back there. And, and so faith in what God says and what God has done is what gives us eternal life. People try to come to God with their own ideas of how they should get to heaven. Well, I kept the Ten Commandments. And you say, I tell people that if you can tell somebody who says, if somebody says that to me, I say, I'll give you a dollar if you can tell me what the Ten Commandments are as they're listed down there. I preached on them a few weeks ago, God writing out with his finger the, the commandments. And uh, uh, whatever, people say, that's how I'm going to get to heaven. No, that's don't work because you don't even know what they are. You get five or six or seven. No one gets ten. Rarely ever to you know, be a scholar or whatever. And I might have a hard time getting ten. But I don't use my, my commandments to keep me to get to heaven. They're my guide while I'm here. And so here he says, so whoever uh, shall believe what the Lord says. He says, believes so that whoever believes uh, will in him have eternal life. This reference about Moses, as the sun was lifted up, you believe that. And it was a story of people, there was a plague. we got a plague going on in our world right now. Uh, I, I talked about that verse. You know, some people think the vaccine's kind of a bogus thing. Well, it's, uh, I, I get all my vaccines. I feel pretty comfortable, and I'm allowed to visit at the hospital. It's quite nice. And whatever, uh, go and sit with other people. But some people feel it's bogus. Well, the, thief, the, the snake on the cross, just look at it. If you got bit, you look at the snake. That sounds kind of bogus, right? But it's what, it's what saved people's lives. And so here we have, Jesus was lifted up, and whoever believes in him will have eternal life. And so God, in that situation, God so loved the world that he gave Jesus for that. And that's the Christmas gift of Jesus. Because you see, love is a giving word. Love is a giving word. And when you give, and when somebody's in love, you, you give that girl a ring and you put it on her finger and, uh, uh, and what? I got some grandkids working in stories like that right now. Um, and when they're in love, they expect a ring. And they expect flowers and whatever and those things in the meantime. But they, the ring comes along. Love gives. And God so loved the world that he gave. He loved the whole world. The, the world. That, that world is, is me. It's Martin. It's you. Listening in. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Only begotten son is interesting because it's monogenetic, monogenes, monogenes. Only one, mono is one, only one son ever, only one person ever had the genes of God, and it was Jesus. He had genes from his mother. He had no earthly father, and God made that egg impregnated, and she had this baby of the virgin birth. You read the stories there, both counts in Matthew and Luke. And, and whatever, she just about got stoned for being pregnant out of wedlock and whatever. And that was an allowable situation. But here we find that uh, God so loved the world, he gave um, his only begotten son, the only one to have uh, his genetic makeup in there. So Jesus, it doesn't matter what he looked like, but the issue about that genetic makeup is more important than the inner man. That he was a man of peace. That he loved peace. That's, how, that's an important word at Christmas. This is one of our um, uh, Advent words. Peace, joy, and, and love. And so uh, these are all words. And he was part of that program. He loved those things. And uh, you know, people they tell people sometimes they're striving so hard to do something. They say, don't strive too hard because, remember, you can't get perfect. And you don't want to be because there was only one perfect person ever in the world. And they crucified him. But God so loved the world that he gave his son, gave a sent him to earth in, in Bethlehem's manger, and then raised him up. And like that serpent put on a cross, he was put on a cross, why? To die for our sins. God so loved that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish. I told people when I was preaching that sermon about the COVID, the devil wants you dead. The devil comes to steal and then kill you and destroy your loved ones with your loss. That's his plan. Jesus says, I come to give you life and give it to the full as you trust him. And so we find here that we, um, uh, we, we, God's gift, the, the gift of love. love. Love was showed as God gave. Um, it's an interesting story I heard this week. My friend says he's got a lady in his life, not his wife, whatever, and she has a problem, probably a new thing in society, and it's called Amazonitis. 
and she just forever orders stuff off of Amazon. Oh, that looks nice, I'll buy that. Oh, that looks nice. And she's got boxes and boxes of unopened Amazon gifts stored in her house. My, my. You know, many people do that same story with Jesus. That's a wonderful story. Virgin birth, died for my sin, or whatever. That's a nice gift. Tell us me about that in the Bible. Get a nice Bible, I'll get it for Christmas. I should read that Bible or do something like this. And they really don't unwrap the gift that God gives. They don't unwrap and find that the blessing and whatever is involved in having a relationship with Jesus and, and knowing the gift, how that gift works out. You know, guys, I understand, are, are not too much. They said a few minutes, seven minutes the most. If a man gets a present or something, or you buy something and you can't get it open in seven minutes, they're pretty want to throw it. We're, that's a, it's a cultural thing with lots of guys. I'm not impressed with that either. You don't want me to use it? Why don't you wrap it like that? You want me to buy it and use it and uh, not use it? So here, um, the, this, these gifts that people get, and they don't use it. How weird is that? You buy, well, I'll use that down the road somewhere. Wow, well, that's a nice thought. But uh, Jesus came to be a gift now, and God gave him as a gift for Christmas right now. And he wants us to use that gift because he loves us. God so loved us. God so loved you. Put your name in there. God so loved you. God so loved Bill Evans, Pastor Bill. God so loved Marlon that he gave his only begotten son to save us and so that we would not perish, but that we would have eternal life in his presence. And so there we say, um, God gives us this gift. Don't put it in the garage. Don't put it away. Don't forget to use it. Utilize it. I got a closing passage in the book of Romans. And it says that one there was love has to be showed. Love is showed in the, in the Christmas story. And it should be showed. Uh, showed to people um, and whatever. Uh, but it's owed to people as well. Romans 13 verses um, 7 to 10 makes this statement. And here he says, Render to all what is due, tax to whom tax, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And then he says, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. One version says, owe nobody anything but the love that you owe them. He says, so he says, owe nobody anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. Are you talking about keeping the commandments? Well, if you love your neighbor right and whatever, then you're going to uh, be on your way to doing that. So he, he goes on from there. For this, uh, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. If there's any other commandment, it is summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Christmas is about love. Do you know there's a whole lot of hurting people through the Christmas season? It's a hard season for people. We say this every year. It's a hard season for some people. And they have a hard time with it. Because they're alone, they're away from home, whatever. They've been hurt. They, they don't have any money. They can't buy gifts. They, they've been bought the devil's lie. You have to have a really expensive gift to show your love. And that's not in the book. And that's not a reality of life in most people's relationships. So he says... The, the, the law is all summed up this. What? Love your neighbor as yourself. And then look at this verse 10. And it says, Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. He looks at my neighbor. How can I help them? It doesn't have to be a big gift. Shovel their walk. Uh, bake them some cookies. Something simple. You've got a special recipe. It doesn't have to be a great big 24 uh, box of Tim Horton donut ideas. Just a little tray of cookies. Hey, thanks for being a good neighbor. And that's really what, what God wants us to do. I have a writing on my desk. Um, I speak of it often. That, uh, you know, and I got a Luke reference here. If you only give to those who give to you, Jesus, in Luke 6, 31, you can check that out. He says, what makes you so good? There's no, everybody in the world does that. They, somebody gives me a gift, I give them a gift. But he says, give to somebody who can't give back to you. And then you've won some grace with God and some favor with God. So one of the things I have is that there's, there's five types of people in the world and they're really people that need to be cared for at, each, at Christmas time and show the love of God to them. And who are they? They're the lame, they're the last, they're the least, they're the lonely, they're the lost. Got no time, they, just, they seem hopeless and helpless and whatever and they seem lost. The lame, last, least, lonely and lost. Think of those people and watch for those people at Christmas season. And may your heart be blessed as you celebrate the joy of our Lord's birth and his coming to earth for us. God so loved the world. God so loved you. He gave his only begotten son. Amen.